Not too soft, not too burned. Just perfect. <coughs> Tangle! Whoops! <laughs> Sorry, Lanolin. Must have blown it too hard. Here you are. Thanks, Whisper. <laughs> Could have been worse, Lanolin. Hmm? Could have gotten marshmallows blown at your face. <coughs> really, Knight? Oh, I'm sorry, Donna. I must have blown it too hard. <sighs> <laughs> okay, that's pretty funny. Here we are gathered around the bonfire, eating chili dogs and roasting marshmallows. Mm-hmm. It's such a beautiful night to be under the stars. I can't think of anything better than this. Me either. You know, this is actually heartwarming. Everyone gathered around the bonfire on a nice autumn evening. I wholeheartedly agree, Espio. Tonight is perfect for the annual restoration bonfire. Since Halloween's around the corner, how about we give ourselves a bit of a scare? Yeah. I like to hear scary stories. Will you be alright, Cream? I'll be okay, Mama. Scary stories are only stories, as you always say. <laughs> My brave little darling. In that case, who dares go first? Oh, oh, I got one! I got one! Uh, don't tell me it's going to be about the hypnotic butterfly. It's not really scary. On the contrary, butterflies have such beautiful colors that they have the ability to hypnotize people and make them into artists. That's interesting, but it's nothing compared to a certain alien invasion that occurred 50 years ago. It was rather a peaceful night, where everyone in the farmhouse was in a midnight slumber. That was until a faint sound came from a distance. It was humming like the rapid movement of the ceiling fan. The family dog awoke to the sound and began to bark, awaking the farmer, his wife and daughter in the process. They all went down the stairs and got out of the house to investigate where the sound came from. The farmer himself told his wife, daughter, and dog to stay near the house as he went through the cornfield. Everything was quiet. Not a word was spoken. Until the farmer screamed at the top of his lungs. <laughs> He ran out of the cornfield to tell his wife to get the authorities involved. But a dark, wrinkly hand with only three fingers came out and caught him by the leg. He screamed once again as the hand yanked him back into the cornfield. He continued to scream until he screamed no more. Just then, the same humming sound from before was heard. The farmer's wife and daughter looked up to see a strange flying aircraft. It was a UFO. It soared off in the distance through the late night sky. The next morning, the authorities tried to search for the farmer, but to no avail. The only items they found were his straw hat and a strange note that contained a message that said, Thank you, Mrs. McDonald, for your contribution. To this day, no one knew what the aliens wanted. No one knew how the farmer's wife contributed to the aliens' motivation. No one knew what it all meant. One thing was certain, however. The farmer was never seen again. Whoa! Holy smokes! I don't have any words to describe how intrigued I am with the story. Oh, quite a fascinating story. <laughs> I'll give him that. It's interesting enough. Nice one, Shadow. Awesome work. Shadow, you have proficient storytelling skills. Thank you. I appreciate it. Not bad, Shadow. But I got a good story to tell. May I? Go right ahead. Thank you. <clears throat> One day, a girl named Sammy was walking through the woods like this one and spotted something in the distance. It looked like a person, but he was walking rather slowly. Given that she was a polite, kind girl, Sammy stopped to say hello. But when the person got close enough, she could hear him moan. She could see that he was metallic. 
he touched her by the shoulder, leaving a clear metallic fluid that grew and grew until Sammy herself was all covered in metal. She began to walk slowly, waiting for the next unfortunate individual to turn into one of them. So, if you hear the moans from the distance, beware of people who look metallic. Stare blankly and walk slowly towards you. Otherwise, you too would fall prey to the Zombots. Wow, Lano, your story is quite spooky. And from here, I thought the time when Mimic invaded all our dreams was creepy. Nicely done, Lanolin. Thank you, girls. I'm happy you enjoyed it. What do you think, Maggie? <coughs> I'm not gonna lie, it's quite scary. I think I'm getting goosebumps. Um, are they real? Nah, they're just make-believe. Chimey's right, Bokoon. There's no need to be afraid. Oh, okay. I'm blown away by Lonalyn's narration. Like her role as a leader, she takes storytelling seriously. That's great, Lanolin. I still think my story about the alien invasion was better. Your story will always be the best in my book. My ultimate storyteller. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, my treasure hunter. Nice one, Lanolin. Anyone else got a good scary story? In fact, I do! Knock yourself out, Silver! Let me guess, is it gonna be about a vengeful spirit from the future? Better than that, Lanolin. There was a flying monster that was capable of leaving catastrophe in his presence. It would come out of the cave in the volcano every night to hunt for food. He ate unsuspecting people for a midnight snack. No matter where the flying creature went, a trail of fire would follow it. Every 200 years, the flying monster would crack from the stone to flaming fire to search for more people to catch and eat. The only way to stop the beast is to throw a large amount of water to its mouth, whether the water would be from a crate or a container. One such night, the creature bursted from the stone to fire and came to Rampage in a peaceful town called Philaria. A kid named Ron heard about the monster, and upon hearing that one of the victims was his dad, he sought to try his luck to put a stop to the creature's rampage. When he got to the volcano, the creature appeared, similarly to a dragon, huge wings and claws, and the lengthy tail and gigantic jaw. It spotted Ron and attempted to eat him. No matter how much the monster tried, Ron dodged his every move. He took out a huge water crate and threw it in the beast's mouth. It screeched in anger and tried to fly out of the volcano, but he couldn't. The water cooled the inside of him and the outside. Gone was the fiery skin that turned stone gray. Ron stuffed the monster and put the fire out. For now. So in case you spot him from this volcano, be sure to have a large amount of water to throw in his mouth. Otherwise, you'll be next to become a snack for the fiery beast. If you have a small amount of water, then... It's no use! Limey, talk about a fiery story, Mite! <clears throat> I gotta admit, your story is pretty neat, Sylph. Thanks, Lanolin. I appreciate that. I happen to be one of his inspirations. Nice job, Silver. Thanks, guys. Might as well keep an eye out for a fiery dragon in case it wakes up after a 200-year slumber. And then the queen spider wandered around the forest until she spotted the girl who was eating curds and whey. <gasps> Shadow! Oh, my chaos. Shadow, honey, are you okay? Whoops. Hmm? 
I keep forgetting that Shadow has a thing with spiders. Maybe next time you let him know in advance. By the time Detective Carter arrived with the groceries, he found out that his partner, Detective Knight, had disappeared with a note from the full moon monster interpreting that Detective Knight was his victim and that Detective Carter himself would be next. <gasps> oh, come on, Storm. It's just a story. You ought to know that monsters are only fiction. Oh, I forgot. And Knight, he's talking about some other detective named Knight. Oh, uh, right. And so, the next time you come out of the woods this late at night, beware of the crescent orange moon, for you will become the next victim for the giant pumpkins! Eep! If I had bones, they would be chilling. <laughs> Your stories are all impressive, but you all ain't heard nothing yet. There once was a gopher highwayman who was on his way to the highway to cross over the Mr. Hayes River to get from one side of the woodland forest to the other. While on his way home, late one night, he discovered a golden medallion from a tree stump that he would pass every day. No one knew where the golden medallion belonged. No one knew who was its original owner. No one went near it for fear of potential danger. Whenever someone got close to the golden medallion, they would be entranced by it for a few seconds, only to be spooked and ran away when they heard the whispery voice say, Take it. It's all yours. But on this particular night, Gopher Highwayman was pleased to see the beauty of the golden glow when he heard the same whispery voice say, Take it, it's all yours. It also said, If you take it, all of your dreams will come true. Seeing this as an opportunity for fame and fortune, he took the golden medallion from the tree stump. Little did he know, he made a mondo mistake. On his ride out of the woods, the gopher highwayman wore the golden medallion and his long purple scarf around his neck and was daydreaming about him living a life of luxury until his scarf got cut on the lower tree branch. He tried to remove his scarf as quickly as he could, but it was too late. He lost his head! So when you go out at night, Beware the galloping sounds, for you may come across the Headless Gopher! I'm not gonna lie, Sonic. Your story is very spooky. Yeah. Whew. I can feel the chill in my bones. So can I. I think I'm getting goosebumps. I am blown away with your story, Sonic. Oh, yeah. Me too. I'm a little bit scared. No worries, Cream. It's just a story. Are you hearing what I'm hearing? What was that? It sounds like galloping. A little bit too late to go horse riding, don't you think? I don't think someone's out for a late night horse ride. What, what is done? He must have gotten kidnapped by the fiery monster who was working with the headless golfer. It's coming this way. Is that... the Golden Medallion? Sonic, what are you doing? Take it. It's all yours. No! Don't accept it, Sonic! You don't want to lose your head, either! Sonic, no! <gasps> oh no! He accepted it! He's gonna lose his head! Oh my <gasps> god! I'm impressed with this golden glow. Huh? Hold on a second. Well, what do you know? It's a golden red chocolate coin. Say what? We got you. <laughs> <laughs> well done. 
Well, what do you know? <laughs> Don was a headless gopher. <laughs> you got me there, Don. I almost fell for that. <laughs> what a win. Sonic! <laughs> I was all like, oh no, he's gonna lose his head. <laughs> Got us all golden wrap chocolate coins. Mmm. Mmm. This is really good. Quite a lovely treat. Mmm. <laughs> Chocolatey goodness. What a wonderful way to end the night of spooky tales. Thank you, Don. My pleasure, Knight. Just simply doing a favor for people I consider friends.